Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of advising within the psychology department. So I'll talk a little bit about when you should come and see one of the psychology advisors, um, who the advisors are, how to get advising, and finally, I'll leave you with some general advice and information about other resources that will be helpful to you. All right, so let's get started. So on this slide, you'll see some of the main reasons to visit one of the psychology advisors. So the first reason would be if you're interested in changing or adding a major or minor in psychology. Now, the process for changing or adding a major or minor in psychology is detailed on our psychology department advising page. So you can read all about the process there. Um, there will also be a video that you can view that outlines that process. There are certain criteria that you need to fulfill in order to change or add a major um, in psychology. So that needs to be done first before we can officially change or add a major in psychology. Okay. Now, once you're ready to do that, either you know changing or adding a major, or you want to add a minor in psychology, then you will come and see one of the advisors, and then we'll start that process for you. Okay, so that's one of the reasons to come and visit us. Also, another reason that students come to see an advisor is they would like help in planning their course schedules or they'd like to review their progress in completing their major or minor requirements in psychology. Now again, you know, in order to plan your course schedule, I think it's very helpful that you use the My Progress function within My SJSU. If you're not familiar with the My Progress function, then I've included a link to a video that walks you through how to use the My Progress function. Now, I think it's important to know how to use that function because when you do the My Progress report, it basically sh generates a report of all of the classes you've already completed, the courses that you are in progress, and more importantly, the, the courses that you still have to complete in order to fulfill your major requirements and your graduation requirements. So the courses that you need to complete still are marked in red. The courses that are in progress are marked in yellow. And the courses that you've already completed are marked in green. All right, so I will also include a video to detail how to go about you know, putting together your course schedules. But if you need further guidance or you just need to confirm that your schedule is um, a good one, then you should come and see one of the psychology advisors and we can provide you with some help with your schedules. Um, another thing that we as advisors do is we review classes that you've taken outside of San Jose State to see if they can be used to fulfill a psych major or minor requirement. So for instance, if you've gone to a community college before you transferred to San Jose State, we can see whether any of the psychology classes you've taken at your community college are equivalent to courses that we require for the psychology major or minor. Now, just one thing you should know is that all of the classes that you've taken at a community college are lower division classes. So they would only be used to fulfill lower division major or minor requirements. Um, the majority of the courses required in your major or minor in psychology will be upper division classes. So those have to be taken either at San Jose State um, or at an equivalent four-year university. Now, there will be some times where we might need to review either the course syllabus 
the textbook or a list of the assignments that you had in those classes so that we can see if they are truly equivalent to a course that we have here at San Jose State. So if that's something that you would want to talk about with an advisor, just be prepared to provide that information to us. Another thing that advisors can help students with is to just give general advice about preparing for or applying to graduate programs or to study abroad programs. And then finally, we can talk with students regarding career opportunities within psychology. Um, I strongly encourage all of you, if that's something that you want to know more about, to visit the Career Center on campus. So I've included a link there to the Career Center. It's basically their uh, job to help students with, you know, information about various career opportunities, internships, resume, construction, interview skills, and all of those kinds of things. So please, you know, uh, check them out. I think they'd be very helpful in, in helping you to, you know, prepare or to know about different career options within our field. Now, here's an important note. Um, if you are interested in a career in clinical or counseling, marriage family therapy, licensed professional counseling, or working in the autism field, the best resource for you is to visit our graduate website in clinical and mental health counseling. Okay, so I, again, I provided the link here for you to use. You can also get to that graduate website by going to the San Jose State Psychology Department website, click on the graduate programs, and then you'll see the clinical and mental health counseling program there. If you go to their website, there is a lot of detailed information uh, regarding a career, graduate school um, requirements for um, clinical and counseling psychology. There's also links to two videos that talk about graduate school, um, the graduation application uh, process, um, licensing to be an MFT or an LPCC. So there's a lot of very useful information there at that website. So take some time to explore that information and read all of the information that they have there. Um, if you have specific questions after you've reviewed that website and the information there, then please contact Dr. Capriati or Dr. Woodhead. They are the co-coordinators of that graduate program. They would be happy to um, help answer any remaining questions that you might have. Okay, so I also want to stress to you guys that um, psychology advisors are mainly responsible for advising for the major or minor in psychology. Okay, any major or minor advising outside of psychology is done in that department. So in other words, if you are a psychology major and a sociology minor, if you have questions regarding your sociology minor, you would go to the sociology department. Questions about your psychology major are done within the psychology department. Okay, so there be two different places that you would need to get your advising from if you have a, a major and a minor. Okay, all other general types of, ad, of advising like uh, GE advising, transfer advising, probation issues, those kinds of things, those um, are done within the Access Center on campus. So the academic advisors at the Access Center can help you with those kinds of general advising questions. So here is their, uh, the link to their website. I think you can make appointments um, from their website 
about those kinds of general advising issues. Um, we also strongly encourage you guys to ask your professors um, any questions that you may have, um, especially those instructors whose expertise matches your own interests. So for instance, if you're interested in counseling psychology or clinical psychology, then it, it would be very helpful for you to ask your professors um, for the courses that you're taking in that area, how they prepared for graduate school, or you know what did they have to do to have the career that they have, those kinds of uh, things. So you know you don't always have to come to the advisor specifically. You can also reach out to your instructors. Um, regarding general advice or guidance, um, they are, can provide very useful information to, to you as well. So now let's talk about um, how to get advising, okay? Well, the first thing you should do before you contact an advisor is again, please go to the psychology a department website. There's the link again. Um, look around that website. We provide you with a lot of information regarding the psychology major and minor. There's frequently asked questions and resources on that page. Uh, we also provide you with an overview of the BA in psychology. There are two and four year planners and organizers for you to use in planning your course schedules. We talk about the criteria for earning an uh, honors distinction in psychology and also information about our two psychology minors are on the website. So you can uh, read about our general psychology minor and also our minor in human systems integration. Okay. So again, you know, always check the psychology uh, advising website first. You can probably find answers to your questions there. If you still have questions, then you can contact one of the advisors. So here are the names of the psychology major advisors, um, Dr. Chancellor Freeland, Dr. Hosoda, Dr. Van Sels, and myself, I'm Dr. Asuncion. So you can contact us, go to the advising page. Um, all of us will have our advising availability listed on the advising page. You can use the links there to make appointments, uh, or you can drop in to our general drop-in hours. Um, so what, whatever best fits your schedule, okay? We try our best to, to cover as many hours as we can. Um, so just kind of go to the advising page and see whose schedule best fits your own schedule. Um, one thing I also wanted to point out is if you are interested in medical school, uh, pharmacy, dentistry, or forensics, the advisor you might want to talk with is Dr. Chancellor Freeland. She is um, an expert <laughs> at those uh, areas in terms of the kinds of courses that you need to take um, in order to apply to those types of programs. So um, if those are your interests, then Dr. Chancellor Freeland is the person to, to try to talk to. Otherwise, you can talk to any one of us to, to help you with your questions. All right, so how do you talk to one of us? Okay, well, there are three ways that you can get advising. So the first way is just through email. Uh, we ask that students use the ad advising email address here um, to send your advising questions to. Okay. Um, please do not email the advisor directly. What we're trying to do is keep our teaching um, and advising duties separate. So we have a separate advising email address for those kinds of questions, okay? Um, so if you have myself as an instructor, for example, please don't email me any advising questions from um, the Canvas page or by using my personal email. 
any advising questions should be addressed to this email address. Okay. Um, if you do want to email a specific advisor, then please put their name in the subject line. So let's just say that, you know, you want to talk to Dr. Van Sels, so please put his name in the subject line. And it's also helpful if you put the topic of the email um, in the subject line. That way we all know what your question might be related to. Also, we try to respond to your emails as uh, quickly as we can. But if you receive a no response within three to five days, then please send us a polite follow-up so that we can make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Now, another way to get advising is to schedule an online Zoom or an in-person appointment. So again, if you go to the advising website, you scroll down to all of the advisors available hours, you'll see that we have links there that you can use to either schedule a Zoom appointment or an in-person appointment with us. Now, those links are going to take you to Spartan Connect. All of the advising appointments are made through Spartan Connect. So if you're not familiar with how to use Spartan Connect, then here's a link for you to use um, that describes how to make an appointment. Um, when you're making an appointment, it's helpful to the advisors if you put the reason that you're wanting an appointment in the comment section. Okay, so, you know, there's a comment box for you to use and you can say, for instance, I'd like to talk to a, you or an advisor about uh, graduation requirements. Okay, so that way we can anticipate um, what kinds of information um, we can provide you with. Okay, um, for some students might not be able to make an appointment through Spartan Connect for various reasons. If you're unable to make an appointment through Spartan Connect, then please let us know via email that you're not able to, and then uh, we can figure out how to um, meet with you. Okay, the advisors were not able to make or schedule appointments ourselves. Um, students only have that ability. But if you're not able to do it, then please let us know and we'll try to figure that out. Um, the last way to contact one of the advisors is to use um, their drop-in hours to just kind of drop in um, to speak to one of us. Again, those drop-in hours are listed on the advising website. One thing just to realize is that if you do drop in instead of making an appointment, we can't always guarantee that we'll be able to speak with you during that time, okay? The reason for that is because sometimes uh, many students come in at the same time. We're not able to accommodate everyone. So the best way to ensure that you'll get an appointment is to schedule um, beforehand. So either via Zoom or in person, okay? But we do have drop-in hours um, for you to use as well. All right, so here are some links to other resources that might be helpful to you. Um, as I said earlier, any, any general advising questions or issues that you may have, please make an appointment with one of the Access Center advisors. So again, there's the link to their website. You can make an appointment with one of the academic advisors to answer any, any general advising issues. There here at uh, the bottom, I have uh, links to other resources that I find might be very helpful to you. So again, we've talked a little bit about the Career Center. Um, San Jose State Counseling Services is a great resource. Um, they have counselors there that you can talk to if you're experiencing any mental health issues or challenges. Um, counseling services are free to all San Jose State students, so please utilize that service 
if you're feeling overwhelmed and you need just some extra support. Peer Connections, it's a great resource as well. It's more of an academic tutoring um, center. Students get free tutoring for any uh, course that they're taking, not only psychology classes, but any San Jose State um, course that you might be taking. You can find a peer tutor to help you with the content or help you with uh, study or note-taking skills, uh, preparing for exams. They also help with um, time management skills or any kind of learning assistance that you may need. Okay, so again, it's a great resource. I really highly encourage you guys to check that out. And then the last resource is the San Jose State Writing Center. So this is a good resource for you to use if you have courses that require papers, uh, which is many of our psychology classes. So in our psychology classes, we often ask students to write research papers or um, literature reviews or general essay types of things, um, especially if you're taking Psych 100W, the Writing Center um, will be able to help with those kinds of assignments to help you to um, organize your papers and gather resources. So I think it's a really great, again, resource that you can utilize. Okay, so I put all of the links there um, for your information. So before I leave you here, I want to just give you some general advice. So the first thing is please be familiar with the requirements for the psychology major or minor. Again, all of that information can be found on the psychology department advising page. So just be familiar with what the requirements are so that it could help you to plan your, your schedule. Um, when you're making your schedule each semester, again, I'm gonna strongly encourage you guys to use the My Progress option so you can see what courses you still need to complete to fulfill those requirements. Again, here I put the uh, link to the video tutorial for you, just in case you're not familiar with how to use it. Um, another thing that I want to encourage you guys to do when making your schedule is to really think realistically about your work, family, and personal responsibilities in planning your schedule. Okay, when I say realistically, I, I need you guys to really think about whether you're gonna be able to handle not only your uh, school responsibilities, but all of your other responsibilities as well. It's a very tough thing to balance all of those things. So you wanna plan accordingly and not um, put too much on your schedule so that it's overwhelming or that, you know, it will be less likely that you're going to be successful in completing your classes. So please don't overschedule yourself and think about how all of those things are going to um, work together during that semester. And then finally, you know, contact one of the advisors if you have questions or need guidance regarding your course schedule. And then again, please use the free San Jose State resources that I've talked about to get additional guidance or help when you need it. So please be proactive and reach out for help um, early. Don't wait till things get too overwhelming or, or too challenging to seek help. Um, try to be as proactive as possible so that you can deal with those challenges once they, they come up, okay? So I'm hoping that this video is helpful. And um, please, again, contact one of the advisors if you have any additional questions or need guidance. Um, and visit the psychology advising page for more information. Hope you have a good rest of your day.